Uh, let's look at the lecture for Chapter 9, uh, Cybercrime and Information System Security. Um, Cybercrime is, is probably one of the fastest growing, but it's also jobs related to security are also one of the fastest growing. So uh, this chapter has uh, maybe just a list, a brief introduction as to what cybercrime is and what security is. Uh, so if you haven't taken some of the networking security classes or some of the security 110 class just to get more in depth on this topic, uh, this at least may wet your whistle to maybe look those up. So, so we're going to try to, in this lecture here, try to talk about the, uh, what, you know, why, why so computer crime is, is so rampant. Why is it, um, what's its impact? But what are some of the things that you'd consider to be a good security system, a strong security system? Uh, how to maybe some ways to prevent, because you know, we're talking about information systems for businesses, so what types of things can we implement to prevent it from happening? Uh, so, and then if you are attacked, uh, what do you have to do? Uh, so, so right now, uh, the, the threat landscape or the situation at hand is definitely uh, as big as it's ever been. Um, organizations are putting together, you know, trying to get countermeasures, trying to put together what they call honeypots and other things to kind of, let, to kind of lure criminals away from their area. Um, here it says in 2014 to 15, the industries that it was hit, uh, public sector, entertainment, uh, technology, pharmaceutical, there's probably not one industry uh, that hasn't had uh, some attack made on it. Um, but why? Why are computer uh, incidents so prevalent? One, the more complex we get, um, it's too hard to plug all the gaps. Um, of course, the higher computer use we have, um, what are we doing? We're, we're trying to respond to people's questions quicker. We're trying to do uh, more and more stuff faster. So when we do things quickly, maybe we're not thinking through all the issues and Somebody sends you an urgent email and you, yeah, 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 okay, I'll get to it, I'll respond, and next thing you know, you've just downloaded a Trojan or, or some other things. Um, so, and of course, as you put new systems in, how they work with old systems, um, it's just, as fast as we're changing things, as complex as things are changing, it, it's relatively easy to find a, a, a gap that's missed. We're also, because each of us are tied to our own personal devices, we start bringing those devices to work and use them as work devices, which then says, gee, all the games and things you downloaded at home now get uh, brought back and uh, put into the work environment. Um, so you run a higher risk of infecting businesses or vice versa. You can take your business virus and take it home. Um, both cases uh, you may not like. Uh, so, um, and we try to rely on commercial softwares that, even though we like them, they tend to have holes that they try to fix or don't fix, and the more we rely on somebody else to, to do it, the worse it is. As you can see just by the number of vulnerabilities, uh, well, this, the data is pretty old, six years out of date. And I'm, I'm guessing that number is probably tripled. Uh, so it's not great. Now, there are definitely you know, certain classifications of the type of people trying to break in, uh, ranging from uh, what they call a black hat attack who violates a computer or internet security system 
maliciously or for illegal purposes uh, to uh, you know somebody that just just playing games you know trying to see if they can get in um, or you come up all the way to a cyber terrorist that says hey I'm attempting to destroy infrastructure I'm trying to take on a, a power grid or a dam or a nuclear power or components of the government uh, an election so to speak maybe uh, so it, it, there are definitely wide range of these, and the types of attacks, yeah, they're they're plenty. Um, ones we keep hearing, I mean, we all know about viruses and, and a little bit of worms, uh, but the one that probably makes as much uh, on the news today is ransomware, uh, malware that stops you from using your computer or accessing data uh, until you pay a demand. There are been colleges uh, in the state of North Carolina that have been hit with this, and takes months to to clean up and preserve and restore the data that that you lost. Uh, you get Trojan horses, lodging bombs. You get different types, and sometimes you get even a combination of these threats. Uh, put multiple things together. Uh, you get spams. You get you know. Kinds of stuff. You get just uh, denial of service, uh, where I can't get access to it. And, and there's one version of a distributed where somebody's coordinating a lot of different devices to attack a particular uh, entry point into your system that doesn't allow your system to respond to valid uh, threats or even valid entries. So, um, just an example of a distributed denial system because I've got all these computers trying to get in and all I'm doing is if I bombard the server fast enough and often enough all it's doing is responding to this and it can't do the work it's doing so um, it becomes something that uh, becomes something that people want to try to prevent uh, a rootkit is just a set of tools a set of programs that enables Users to gain administrative access. Um, take some of the uh, securities or ethical hackering programs. You, you get a set of tools uh, not to use to break in, but to know what kind of tools are out there so that you can prevent them from happening uh, in your network. Because you always have this persistent threat. Uh, it's a network, you know, they look for an advanced persistent attack. It's just an attack the intruder gains access to the network and pretty much stays there, undetected, just, you know, waiting. Yeah, it's it still got the intent of stealing or destroying data, but it's taken it a little bit of the time. And, and as with like any good soldier, what am I doing? I'm, I go in, I do some reconnaissance, uh, maybe I'll try to, Go in and do some incursions, try to investigate a little deeper, discover what's out there. I'll capture the information that I think is interested, and then I'll take it back with me. I'll export it out. Um, and the hard part about it is, is you're checking your system. You're looking for these anomalies of data either coming in or activity on the system or data leaving the data that would alert the administrator that something is going on. That they're being you're being targeted for this advanced phishing. Uh, we've all heard it. You know, you try to get use an email and try to get the get person to uh, reveal personal information, uh, whether it's a con or artist or whether it's uh, just trying to get personal information or post a credit card or a password or social security number. Uh, just gather some information. That you don't like. Now there's different types. You, you get variation of phishing, you know, smishing and vishing. I'll let you take a look at those, but it, it, it boils down to it's smishing is using texting, uh, vishing is using a voicemail. So just different types of techniques to do this. All for what? Uh, some of it could be for identity theft, identity theft. Some of it could just be to see they can do it. So who, 
in, you know, just a lot of in different information. Uh, types of ex exploits, you know, you get, when you do the cyber espionage, you, um, now you're looking at uh, areas where I'm trying to deal with system of organization, government agencies, military contractors, um, and they're mostly targeted because they're high value targets. And the things they're looking for, maybe sales and marketing information, you know, plans, schedules, budgets, uh, employee information, customer information, uh, maybe um, partnership information, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, cyber terrorism, it, it's, it's intimidation of a government, of a civil, you know, of a government, of a country, or a city, a school, um, to try to interpret some of that, try to gather information. Uh, Department of Homeland Security has a link that enables you to report these types of incidents. Uh, and the reports all go to the U.S. Uh, Computer Emergency Readiness Team, the U.S. CERT team, and they try to you know, work through uh, the situation. Uh, these are just a few of the federal laws that address computer crimes. So it's not anything we just fairly recent. All these laws have been around a while, but just how do you enforce them in a lot of cases? Um, now the question is, how do I start implementing a secure system, a more secure system? Uh, when you got to assess your threats, you know, what do you have that somebody else wants? Um, and then what kind of actions can that address the most serious vulnerabilities? So, I mean, you've got vulnerabilities. The question is, what's the most important, what's the most important data you're trying to protect? And what's the most vulnerable way to get into that area? Um, and then trying to make sure users understand that. Because sometimes people just don't know how vulnerable their system is. So this way it kind of, you just got to let people know. And then, you need to understand, okay, when something happens, what do we do? What, what, what action plan do we have? You know, do I know, who do I notify? What kind of evidence do I protect so that the authorities can investigate and maybe prosecute if, if lucky? Uh, keeping activity logs, how do I contain the problem to, to the small area as possible? How do I get rid of it? How do I recover? All of these are things that a, a business needs to think about and spend a lot of time and energy uh, developing and cleaning up after the fact. So the question, how do I assess the risks I have? And basically that is looking at everything you have and what from a computer, now granted, what is your, how is your computers and your network established? So how vulnerable are they to internal or external attack? Um, now, granted, there are some general steps, but uh, you know, pretty much identify the assets, uh, identify what loss would happen if a threat had occurred. Um, maybe assess how frequently events or the likelihood of a threat would be. Uh, of course, you've got to understand, okay, if a threat happens, if it happens once uh, every 10 years, what's the impact of that? If it happens every week, what's what's the impact of that. Um, what happens if it happens, it happens at the end of the month, the beginning of the month. Um, so it, it's looking at when does that impact, okay, what impact does it have? And then to say, okay, how can I take each of these impacts, each of these threats, and how can I prevent it? Can I prevent or at least minimize the effort or the pain that's going to be caused uh, if attacked? Um, and of course, every one of these mitigation plans and plans to protect all have a cost. Um, so the question is, are you willing to pay what it's going to do to take to protect uh, that environment, that situation? Uh, and then you got to say, okay, once I understand the assets, its risks, the cost, do I or do I not go ahead and do anything about it? Um, now, one thing a lot of good companies do, and I would think most companies do, is they establish a security policy. policy. And all that does is, what are the what's the organization's security requirements uh, for controlling uh, 
and proving that the controls are in place and people are following it. Um, so basically outlines what needs to be done and how to do it. Um, it, it could be uh, once you've got the policy, you want to try to automate as much of this as possible. Uh, you want to make sure, because you don't have somebody relying on a, book, a set of policies written in the book someplace. Uh, you want to automate this to capture the data, to lock it down, to notify people, to get things going as automated as possible. Um, some companies have uh, set up special requirements on for mobile devices, uh, stuff you can bring in from home. Uh, of course, the biggest thing is I can have a policy that just sits on the, on the shelf and nobody knows about it, but yep, I've got it. But I don't let the users, you know, the employees know what the policies is and what the penalties are. Uh, it's, it's kind of a useless pos policy. And then I want to go about, once I've notified everybody, so these are the rules, this is what I'm trying to follow, see, this is what I'm trying to follow. i got to go ahead and start preventing things. i got to start implementing a layered security approach to make the computer break in so difficult that a hacker gets up. I mean, if, it's, if your car door is unlocked, it's easy to go in and somebody's going to take up the door, right? But if your cars are locked, it has a motion sensor on it, it's in the garage, the garage door is locked, they're not going to, they're looking for the easy attack. They're not looking for something, at least for most of us. I mean, yeah, there are some uh, high value targets that are so valuable that people will go through anything to get to it. Um, but most of us, uh, most companies don't have that kind of uh, high value target that would benefit, you know, that much pain. So uh, a little bit of prevention goes a long way. You may want to implement a firewall uh, to start uh, isolating uh, what your public can see on your website and protect it from the internal uh, databases and systems that you don't want anybody to see. Um, sometimes they'll create, you know, dashboards, just a way of knowing how secure your system is uh, after you've done some kind of audit. Um, you're going to install uh, anti-virus software, uh, which you know, it, it detects if there's a virus detected, and then if it's found, what am I going to do? Am I going to review it, clean it, isolate it? Uh, but the key here is you've got to update. If you don't update this software, it doesn't work very well. Um, you want to make sure that uh, other safeguards is making sure that your accounts, you want to keep, uh, if an employee leaves, close down their accounts. You want to make sure that everything is cleaned up and only the people that are in your employment, their systems are, are up and running. You can create roles or special accounts that uh, allows only permissions, only ask access to what their job re requires and nothing else. Um, because you got to make sure you're addressing the most current, most critical internet security threats, uh, computer attacks, um, and you can take a look at the uscert.gov website and look at what some of the current attacks are and see how, and then say, okay, am I taking actions to uh, keep my system up to date as much as possible? Uh, making sure I'm doing security audits and making sure people look at it. I want to make sure I've got detection uh, set up. And it can be done a couple of different ways. There's something called an intrusion detection system, and it's software hardware that monitors the system, and it, it notifies the security personnel or the system administrator that something's going on. And there's a couple of different types. There's knowledge base and there's behavior base. Um, but there's another system out there. There's you know, this is just a little pretty, pretty picture. But there's a, there's one, another, there's an intrusion protection system that actually tries to, when it detects something, it actually does something other than just notify. And that's, that's the key. I mean, and you've got to decide, am I going to do a detection system or a prevention system? 
so that do I care about somebody that's protecting and trying to um, do something when it finds it. I don't want to get a page at 2 in the morning and then think, yeah, I'll get to it in the morning, but that time, you know, four hours have passed and they've taken everything into the store. But if I have a, a intrusion prevention, once they notice something, maybe I can lock down that port um, and block that MAC address, an IP address. Um, so part of your plan is make sure you say, how do I respond? How fast can we respond? Um, both technically and emotionally. How am I going to tell the staff this is what's happened? You're, we've, we've just lost your, uh, your payroll. Um, now, incident notification, this is a key plant part of your plan. you got to make sure that um, who do I notify? Um, you know, within the company, within uh, suppliers, the police, the FBI, uh, all of those things, uh, you need to make sure your plan, let's go on. Of course, one thing you got to decide is, am I going to tell the customer? Am I going to tell somebody that their data has been compromised or could have been compromised? Um, you want to make sure you protect it. you got to make sure that the police and the FBI have data that, like I said, if they can prosecute, there's enough data that you've captured enough stuff, the right stuff, to together and that's part of what that plan's all about is what types of things do I want to protect and get. Um, of course, how do I contain it? Who do I tell? How much do I tell? Can I limit it to just a small uh, part of the system? And I gotta get rid of it. Uh, I mean, I gotta collect all the data, all the log data. Um, I gotta also keep track of the logs of everything you did. Um, all the backups you had. Um, did you take enough backups? I mean, taking backups once a month may not be enough. You might not, you know, your business lose a month's worth of data. Um, and then the question is, I got to follow up. I got to make sure that um, it, because it's, you know, how is it? You know, kind of like a post more. Okay, how did they get in? And then say, how do I plug it up? How do I, um, you know, what does it take? How much money does it cost us? Both uh, in maybe publicity, maybe in proprietary secrets, uh, a lot of different ways that money can be, you know, can be spent or can be across to you. And then uh, you, you can pay a company uh, that can do this, all this stuff for you. Uh, you know, there's several out there, uh, your choice. You know, you, it's the same decision we did with uh, developing a system. It's a decision to buy or make. Um, maybe start out with buying it and then build your own later. Um, a huge growing career is computer forensics. And, and it's it kind of like combines law and computer science into the same thing to identify, collect information, you know, CSI on, on, on computers. Uh, so it's how do I handle the connect data? How do I... Um, you know, present the data so I can make sure I've got it to build a case if it does go to court. Uh, so, a lot of interesting information. Uh, so, hopefully this gives you a rough idea of how serious this, this industry is or this topic is with most businesses. But maybe it's also wet your whistle to say, gee, I'd like to know more about this. And maybe it's as simple as taking a Security 110 class and uh, you go a little deeper. Like I said, it's one of the growing careers out there, so if you're interested, check it out. Have a nice day.